Time intelligence functions in Power BI in DAX are amazing, except when they're not. If you've ever had to work with a custom calendar or try to calculate week over week, you know what I'm talking about. In this video, we're going to show you how to easily solve those week over week calculations without time intelligence functions. So let's jump right in. My name is Mitchell Pearson here at Pragmatic Works, and what I'm going to show you today is how to leverage visual calculations within Power BI. So what I've done is I've started up with just a very simple Power BI report here, and I've brought in my week number of year. If you've ever tried to do week calculations week over week in Power BI using DAX, you know that this can be quite complex. Really what I would normally do with a customer prior to visual calculations, and really even still today, is we would go in and update the date table and we'd add additional columns to the date table to support the DAX calculations that we're going to need to write. So we would add in there week number, and I'd really start the week number from the very beginning of my date table until today. So one, two, three, four, up until a thousand, whatever it is, the number of weeks that we're working with. And you might have to add in some additional columns to support the DAX calculations as well. But the bottom line is that we're writing a custom DAX calculation and it's not going to necessarily be as easy as what we've become accustomed to within the DAX language when you're doing things like year to date, month to date, et cetera. So let's jump right in and take a look. On this report, I have the year and I have the week number and we have our total sales. And all we want to do is we wanna get the total sales for the prior week without having to write some custom DAX and understanding filter context. So I'm going to use visual calculations. And what I can do is over here on the home ribbon, I can click right here to start a new visual calculation. If you don't see that icon or if it's grayed out, this is still a preview feature as of today in Power BI Desktop. So what you can do, you can go to File, go to Options, Options and Settings, and then under Preview Features, what you're going to want to do is just go ahead and scroll down here and select visual calculations, click OK. You might have to restart Power BI Desktop, but then you will see this really cool option. And so now if I click on new visual calculation, it's going to bring me to this screen right here. And from this screen, this is where we can start doing some really quick, really intuitive, really quick things. A visual calculation is a calculation that is performed on the visualization itself. So it removes a lot of the outside factors that typically make DAX kind of hard to understand and sometimes troublesome. And so here, all I wanna do is say, hey, I'm on this row. I want you to go back to the previous row and grab the data from that row. So what I'll do is over here on the left, there is an FX uh, for an expression template. So we can start from the templates. It's a great place to start. And from the dropdown, I'm gonna tell it that I wanna do versus previous. Now, I would definitely encourage you Take a moment to go through all the options here and then start learning about some of the parameters. If you don't know where to start and you're familiar or maybe you're not familiar with Pragmatic Works, you should take a look at our on-demand learning platform where we have over, what, over 200 classes now. And we have a class that is dedicated just to visual calculations in Power BI where we go through all of this in depth. So what I wanna do here though is click on versus previous. When I click on that, it's going to give me really a template. And it says, okay, for the field, what do you want to do? And I'll click the dropdown. And you'll notice, now the dropdown is a new feature, by the way. So if you're watching this, as soon as it's released, you don't see this. It's because I'm on a newer version, the latest version of Power BI Desktop. However, this is a new feature. So you might just have to type it in if you don't get the little dropdown. I'm going to go ahead and click on Total Sales. And then I have Total Sales. And then it says, okay, well, what are you going to subtract from Total Sales? Well, I want to subtract the, pri the, the previous row. And so the way I can select the previous row is just use the previous function and I'm going to do total sales again. And so I have total sales and I have minus the previous total sales. And this is really, really cool. Now from here, you can add additional DAX calculations, right? I could say divide the numerator minus the prior period by the, the prior period, right? So I could do a calculation that says, hey, what is my actual percentage growth? But all of that's easy. That's basic arithmetic, basic math that we've been doing for a long, long time. The hard part is how do I get the prior row? And so I'm gonna go ahead and name this previous sales, all right? So we'll name this previous sales. 
and then I'm going to hit enter. And this is really cool. Now, because of the way the calculation's written, it takes you a little bit of time to kind of validate it. I'm gonna look at row 32, week 32, week 32 minus week 31 is roughly around $15,000. And so I can look over here and say, is that the difference between week 32 and week 31? And yes, it is. I don't even necessarily love this calculation. So here's the next question. Are we limited? Do we have to stick with the expression templates? And the answer is absolutely not. As I alluded to a moment ago, once you start working with this, you can build on it, you can subtract from it. And so for example, if I come back over here and click on this visual calculation that we just created, I now can come back in here and I can say, you know what? I don't actually want to subtract the current cells from the previous cells. I actually just want to return only the previous cells. So I delete the first part and I just want to return what was the previous cells? What was the sales for the previous row? I want to just see it side by side because maybe there's some other calculation that I want to do. And so I can hit enter now and I have my previous cells and it's a little bit easier a little bit more intuitive for us to kind of understand what's going on. Now I can build another visual calculation that subtracts the two, that does some division, that does whatever I need it to do. But this is a really cool way of being able to quickly see what are my cells for the current week minus the prior week. In fact, where this is challenging in a lot of data models is if you have 52, 53 weeks and it starts over at week number one when it gets to a new year, if you're writing your own custom DAX, you might say, okay, we'll calculate the total sales, take the current week number minus one. So go back one week. Well, that doesn't work if you're on week one, because now you'd have week 52, week 53, whatever it is. But you'll notice in this model, if we scroll down a little bit and we come all the way down to week one, we can see that it does properly return the prior week. All right. So we're done with our visual calculation. Let's go back to our report. And let's talk about something else here. So we see that this week over week calculation is kind of working, right? We were able to pop it right up and it works. What happens if we change the filter context of this report? What happens if I remove week and I add month? What happens if I remove month and I add quarter? Let's take a look. So if I come over here and I get rid of the week and I bring in the month, like here, you'll notice that it still works. Now, if you've been writing DAX for a long time, you're starting to think, wait a minute, are you telling me that you just created one visual calculation that's replacing multiple measures that I would typically have to create in my model? The answer is yes, but stay tuned. I, there's a caveat. Okay, there's a caveat. So this is the month. If I come back over here and I grab the quarter, so I'm going to grab the calendar quarter. I'll drop that in here. If I go up to the quarter level, you'll notice that it works at the quarter level. And if you add semester, it works at semester. And if you look at the year level, it's also working at the year level. This is really cool. This is really amazing. There's some really cool stuff you can do with visual calculations. If you wanna dive more into DAX and visual calculations and everything that you're seeing here and learn a little bit more about all of that, make sure to check out on our YouTube channel, our 2025 edition of DAX functions. It's a great three hour free course that you could take that is amazing and it's there for you. So definitely take a look at that and we cover visual calculations in that course as well. Now, what is the caveat that I mentioned earlier? The, the, the caveat is I've created this really amazing previous sales calculation, but it's only available in this visual. So if you're like most people, you start building out your Power BI reports and you start having a bunch of these different visuals that you're building on different pages, well, now you'd have to recreate this visual calculation on every single one of those reports because it's not portable and it's not reusable. And so that is a little bit of a downside of visual calculations. The benefit of visual calculations is it gives you what you were used to, what you expected, what you wanted to see when you were working in tools like Excel. That's what Excel would let you do. Why couldn't we ever do that here? Well, now you can but that's just one of those caveats. Again, visual calculations really are a, a, an amazing feature. They are a cool feature and they give us a lot of flexibility. If you haven't already, please take a moment to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you can be notified whenever we drop new videos like this. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.